Hello, hello, hello. This is Mongo. Welcome again to Mongo's Big Thinks. Today I want to talk about a little movie called Kra the Sea Monster. Now, I was thinking about how I could introduce this movie. Now, to do this, you know, I want to compare Kra to a couple other movies because this movie has some elements that are similar to other movies. It's, it's not, you know, it's not a bad thing, you know, not a bad thing at all. Hey there, everybody. Now, to talk about Kra, you kind of have to acknowledge a few other genres of movies. <clears throat> and I will do so with food, because I love some food. So, one of the most uh, prominent things about Kra is that it has some similarities to giant monster movies, like Godzilla. I'll use this side. <laughs> like Godzilla. You know, I'm just going to use Godzilla monster movies as like this banana, you know. Everybody likes a good banana. You know, you take a banana, you peel it. You know, some people don't like bananas, just like some people don't like Godzilla movies. And a little bit of a brown spot, that's good though. Just means it's sweet. Then, you take another thing. You take some Star Wars. Now, uh, you know, depending on who you ask nowadays, most people, or a lot of people like Star Wars. Star Wars, I'm going to use a lime because, you know, limes are pretty good, you know. Mmm, look at that. Look at that. Lime. You know, limes are good. And then you take one more element. And this element, I will say, is uh, from the Power Rangers or Super Sentai, you know. You take some, uh, I have some carrot sticks. You get some carrot sticks, you know. People, you know, something you'll notice here is with every food, there is, uh, there are good things about it, you know, carrot sticks, they're, they're pretty tasty, honestly, you know, limes, they're nice, nice and sweet, bananas, pretty good, you know, pretty much a staple, you know, there's good things about each kind of uh, genre, you know, in fiction. Godzilla movies are awesome. I love Godzilla movies. They are giant monsters. They go around. They destroy buildings. You know, they knock them down. You got the uh, Super Sentai. You got your Power Rangers. You know, you got a bunch of, uh, you know, fighters. And they fight each other. Teamwork, you know. Teamwork makes the dream work, people. They fight off monsters. Sometimes they get giant robots, which is even better. And then Star Wars, you know, classic, you know, that classic sci-fi, you know, flying through space, battles, lasers, blasting, aliens, lots of fun stuff. What happens when you take elements of each of these and you put them together into one thing? Now bear in mind, I'm not going to put the whole amount of these, but you know, we take some of this, we take a little bit of Power Ranger, we throw in a little Godzilla, we uh, give a nice little squeeze for some, uh, uh, for some science fictions from aliens. I'll use a whole lime here just to, you know, get that good squeeze in. take these elements, we smoosh them together, and we get a new concoction, you know, we get an original property. And folks, you know, you'll notice with the new product, you have elements of the old, and uh, well,
when you taste them, it's honestly not that bad. Not that bad. Not that good either. That is what I would say about Craw the Sea Monster. Folks, join me as we go through this unique little movie. Grab a drink, grab some snacks. Hopefully we have a good time with this little video here. Now folks, to begin with, Craw the Sea Monster is a very simple movie with a very simple plot. We start out on the dark planet Proyas. In an unknown part of the galaxy, this planet is ruled by the sinister Lord Doom. No, not Darth Vader. No, not Lord Zed or Doctor Doom. He is, in effect, his own character and original character, Do Not Steal. This sinister mister um, is surprisingly lacking in an army and seeming power, but he has his faithful minion, Chamberlain, and of course he has the deadly and powerful Craw at his disposal. He has a sinister plan to send Craw to the planet Earth in order to clear out all traces of human civilization so that he himself can go to the planet and take it over for himself. But before he can do so, he must get rid of a powerful intergalactic um, team of heroes, the Planet Patrol. Now, the Planet Patrol are a very uh, interesting little group of people. You could say they're a couple, uh, a bit of a uh, star force or guardians of the galaxy, so to speak. Now, I'm not saying they're derivative, but, uh, well, they do fly around in a giant Death Star, essentially. But, uh, we have a small cast of four teenagers with attitude. We have our Captain Bridger, we have a few other mm, mildly important people. Mm, I wouldn't really say important. That might be a bit of an overstatement. But, as our cast begins to assemble, the evil Lord Doom sends down Craw to Earth, where it lands in the ocean. Now, good old Craw, he is a sea monster, of course, so this is a very nice, wet welcome for him. Unfortunately, it is at nighttime, so most of the details of Craw are pretty much covered up by the uh, um, darkness. But unfortunately, something happens. Danger! Danger! With his terrifying technology, the evil Lord Doom is able to successfully cripple the Planet Force's main Star Destroyer, no, their main battleship. And we move on to two characters who I think are much more effective than our uh, teenagers with attitude, our Guardians of the Galaxy. Enter Bobby the Biker and Alma the Waitress. It's a very interesting little cast of characters here, but mostly Bobby. He is the guy who is the real star of this movie, in my opinion, for obvious reasons. One of them uh, tea drinking bikers or something? You hear something? Like what? Sort of a high-pitched harmonic. Get your hands off of me. I'm checking you for injuries. Are you a doctor? I took a couple years in med school. Yeah? Uh, I did some work as an intern on the Voyager team back when I was a grad student. What are you? Are you some kind of big brain or something? What are you? Some kind of big brain or something? Yeah. 
Big brain, big hair, big gut, big everything. Big brain, big hair, big gut, big everything. Just priceless. Priceless. When I first saw that, the amount of hysteria that I felt, the, the madness, the insanity that I felt when I saw and heard that line, you know, I, they could have put me in an insane asylum. Buonasera, gente della terra. Io mi chiamo Mogliar. Ciao. Now, folks, that was uh, our next important character in this lovely movie. That is the one and only Mogiar. Now, he is an agent of the Planet Patrol who has been sent down to Earth in order to stop Kra the Sea Monster. Now, initially, Mogiar thought that he'd be landing in Italy. So, through the technology of his mothership, good old Mogiar learned to speak Italian. Unfortunately, he landed down in New Jersey. <laughs> and, of course, you know... Surprisingly, Mogiar is a very quick learner, and he's also a speed reader too. And in no time at all, good old Mogiar, the Italiano Eliano, has learned how to speak perfect English with a very thick Italian accent, folks. Take a look here. I guess you want to hear it, huh? So, uh, do you have a name? Of course I have a name. How else would the people know what to call me? Mogyar. Unfortunately, the U.S. government sends their top agents to capture Mogyar and apprehend our two important characters, Bobby and Alma. Of course, some uh, humorous antics begin. Uh, uh, hey, I'm coming to peace, okay? Biocontainment on the double. Hey, I'm here to help you, okay? He's speaking with an Italian accent. Shut up! Don't listen to him! Eventually, we finally get to see Craw in the daylight. And I gotta say, it's a very impressive costume. And they did a really good job with the models of uh, some of these buildings in this movie. Craw looks very good. The suit is very impressive. It doesn't exactly strike me as um, aerodynamic in the water, but you know, whatever. It's got gills, it's got big old sharp teeth, it's got those giant fish eyes, and it looks like, you know, to be frank, Kra is pretty jacked. He is a big brick house of a monster. And then later on in the movie, we get this pearl of a scene. has a good little scene of destruction throughout the nighttime uh, cityscape and he does some pretty cool moves here like this interesting little blasting effect here and he continues his swath of destruction clear through the night and for probably a good 10 or 15 minutes in the meantime our my favorite characters, Bobby and Alma, escape the government with Mogiar. Bobby has a nice shave and a haircut, and man, that must have been a huge hairball. And eventually, they come up with a plan, with the help of Mogiar, to commandeer a nuclear power site and create a weapon that can hopefully take out Kra once and for all. Our heroes then begin a desperate race against time in order to get their deadly super weapon ready to destroy Kra before the government can stop them and before Kra can get to them as well. In the meantime, our famous, you know, Planet Patrol, they are also trying their best to halt the advance of Kra and also get their space station up and running again. 
but things look dire, and the odds are stacked against Bobby and Alma and Mogiar down on Earth. Things begin to become more and more desperate as the government begins to slowly close in on them and stop their mission to save the Earth. In the meantime, we get to see, you know, some of Mogiar's hand-to-hand skills, like killing a man just by grabbing his wrist. And thankfully, Bobby is able to connect the laser, the laser shoots Kra, the planet patrol, they're able to siphon the energy from that laser, from Kra, back into their spaceship. mumbo jumbo and plot convenience. Kra is finally destroyed and the planet patrol are able to appear and finally confront the evil Lord Doom. Fighting then quickly ensues between Lord Doom and Captain Bridger in a pretty well choreographed little scene, you know. I would prefer a few more, um, you know, steel chairs. You know, I'm more of a WWE guy myself. But, I gotta say, Captain Bridger, he does a pretty decent fight. And the actor for Lord Doom has uh, some good little moments here. Eventually, Lord Doom is defeated. And his little, his little friend, Chamberlain, is also captured. The day is saved once again. Or is it? Before we finally close out the movie, we have a nice little open-ended scene, and we hear a nice evil laugh to close out our movie. <laughs> Folks, that was Craw the Sea Monster. Now, I didn't go through every little plot point there, or every little scene. I just took a few scenes from that movie. And you know, so, some of my favorite scenes. <laughs> Put it into a video so you guys could see it. Hopefully, you guys are at the very least amused by it. Personally, I really like this movie. It takes a few little a little digs at um, Godzilla. <laughs> not the not the good Godzilla, but uh, Godzilla 1998. But anyhow, you know, something that I like about this movie is uh, is the effort put into it, as funny as that sounds. You know, hear me out, hear me out, guys. <laughs> you know, when I see a movie like this, it makes me think, wow, I could make a movie like that. You know, I could throw on a little, you know, a monster costume walk around, make some noise, stomp some stuff, have some fun. In fact, that gives me an idea. This summer, coming to you on the big screen, a new monstrous feast of destruction. Something's coming, something Big and something monstrous. <laughs> Beware, people around the world. A new monster arises from the jungles of the unknown Ognam. A beast so ferocious and deadly, even the military will be powerless against him. Friend to no one, and foe to everyone, destruction follows in his wake. No one knows the purpose of this creature, but all eyes are on him, and all eyes are looking towards the heavens for relief. Will you survive the destruction of Agnam? 
find out this summer and see Agnon, Terror of the Jungle. Presented by Mongo's Big Things, a production company. <laughs> That's pretty fun, guys. I'm Mongo. This has been a short video. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and embrace the beast, baby. Bye-bye. <laughs>